can't hit the line you want with the power you want, it's all in your head. Let's talk about it. Spin it. Hey DMD family, welcome back to another Discs MD video. And before we get started, we did it. We hit a thousand subscribers, uh, and over a short period of time, I gained a hundred subscribers. So thank you, thank you so much uh, for everybody that subscribed. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe. It's free. Doesn't take long, and uh, it helps me get content out to more people. Uh, be looking at, to my Instagram, which should be linked in the description below. Uh, relatively soon for a giveaway, a disc giveaway. I just want to, I don't have a lot, but I want to show my appreciation to you all for uh, for doing this. So I'm going to do a disc giveaway. It's not this one. It'll be another one. Um, but be on the lookout for that for my in my Instagram. So, but let's get to it. All right. So let's get into what we want to talk about today. And okay. So it was a little bit of an overstatement in, in the beginning there. It's not all in your, I just think that aspect of our throw is very overlooked. I, I watch a lot of content. I watch a I watch a lot. I watch a lot. Words are hard. I watch a lot of content. I watch a lot of slow motion of the pros. I watch a lot of instructional YouTubers. I watch the lessons at the Power Disc Golf Academy. I watch myself. Is that narcissistic to watch myself? Something that is not talked about. I don't believe nearly enough, if at all, uh, especially lately, is the importance of the head in your throw. I mean, just think about, think about every sport movement that you can think of. The head is vital to the success of the precision of the movement. Think of a baseball swing. Think of a golf swing. Think of slap shot and hockey, tennis, wh whatever it is. Where the head goes, the body goes. The movement of the head is vital to the success of precision in a sports movement. And it's no different with disc golf. And in critiquing my own form, I've found that my head leads me astray far more than it should, as evidenced by this and this. Yeah. It's kind of embarrassing. And and as I watch and as I throw and as I experience my game, I find that my head movement affects my timing, which affects my accuracy and my power. All right, so let's talk about accuracy first. A very interesting observation that I've made when I'm watching the pros slow-mo. Go to YouTube and uh, YouTube pro slow motion. And there's a ton of them out there. Uh, I'm not going to bring them over here because I don't have rights to them. And I don't want to use anybody else's content. Uh, and I don't have forms sent to me like Josh from Overthrow. But it's very interesting to me. Watch their head. And, and this is as far as accuracy is concerned. Watch the head of almost all the pros. They fix on their target. And they watch their target much longer than I thought. Like their head is forward until it can't be for it anymore, until their shoulders push it backwards. Now, in baseball and softball, uh, I was always trained, and, and I coach uh, shoulder to shoulder with your chin. And what I mean by that is when I set up my, my, my swing, I rest my, my chin on my front shoulder, right? And that's where my head stays. And during my swing, my head stays still, and my shoulders rotate until my back shoulder hits my swing and carries me through. If you watch the pros in their backhand form, that's nearly what they do. They watch their target until they get to the spot where they can't watch it anymore and their shoulder is pushing their head back. And then their head stays quiet all the way through the shot until their back, their back shoulder, the back part of their body swings their head around. For accuracy, I think this is extremely important. Because you can't hit what you can't see. And again, I coach this in my softball girls all the time. You have to be looking at what you're throwing at or you're not going to hit it. 
Now in disc golf, it's tough because the backhand forces you to be blind for a little bit. But as long as we can keep our eye on the target that we want to hit, we need to keep our eye on, eye on the target that we want to hit. Because that will fixate in our mind where we want to go with our throw and align our body in such a way to be able to hit it when we come through with our back. That's one part of accuracy. Keeping your eyes on the target as long as possible. And then keeping your head quiet through the rest of the throw. The second thing that it does is it allows us, and, and this is accuracy and power. We'll start with the accuracy part of it first because we're talking about accuracy. It allows us to come into the power pocket if we keep our head quiet. Like I am very, very guilty of, and I, and I just showed you, pulling my head through the shot. And what does that do? When we get back here and we pull our head through the shot, what, just stand up and do it. Get into your backswing and then pull your head forward. What does that do? It collapses this arm. It collapses the pocket. I can't get into the power pocket and therefore what do I have to do? I have to round. And what does rounding do to accuracy? It kills it. Right? Because when I'm coming through the power pocket, I'm on a line. Right? My disc is in a variance of about this much if I'm going through the pot, power pocket. Right? So my variance of missing my target is going to be much less if I'm coming straight through my power pocket to the hit. When I round, where is my variant? What is my variance? It goes from this to this. Because now, and I'll turn, well, how is the best way to... <laughs> to visualize this now it's it's i can release anywhere from here to here anywhere along that spectrum anywhere along this spectrum right here i can release so i have a much greater propensity for error and when do i let go of the disc there's no definitive point when i round to let go of the disc so accuracy is just gone so when i pull my head forward and collapse the pocket accuracy is just out the window. And I feel this when I play on a course. I know when I pull my head through because early releases happen all the time. Piggyback that or, or transition from there into power, right? And that's why it kills our power. When we pull our head through, we collapse the pocket, right? And I've said it before, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. And the only way to get into the power pocket on the straight line is to keep our head quiet. Because if we're pulling our head through and collapsing our arm into our body, we have no power pocket. Rounding kills power. So we need to keep that head quiet, pull the disc through, and get to the head. And then let the head come through. I mean, that's, that's, that's just, that's just one, disc golf 101. We need to learn how to keep our head quiet if we want to be accurate and if we want to get the power that we want. And so, as always, I drill for this now. And uh, as always, it's a progression. Uh, but uh, I've, I've been watching uh, a new guy that I've found on YouTube, and I think he's relatively new, maybe connected with Bedanza somehow. It's Blitz. Um, I think that's the name. But he does a lot of standstill stuff. And I love that because, you know, that's how I train my body too. I mean, as an athlete, breaking it down into um, – bite-sized portions so that we can focus on things is is key for us to training our bodies to do things repetitively and stand still in 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 drills is just where it's at to me in disc golf this is how i train my body so i'm going to back up a little bit here you don't need to see my feet because this is all about my head movement i want you to watch my head actually i'm going to move the camera for a second over closer to me so i can throw into my net and not into my window <laughs> and there we are and sorry about the tree shadows in my face but Sorry. Anyway, not good camera work, but I'm not a f photographer or filmographer. Stand still. I'm training myself to look at my target, go into my backswing and keep my eye on my target until my shoulder pushes me back here. And then I keep my head here as I come forward and release. And then I look at my target. Now it's tough for us to know if we're actually hitting our target, if we do that, because the disc has already hit the target before we turn back through. So what I would do is set my camera up behind me, have my stack of discs here, and just throw like five at a time. And here's what it looks like.
okay? And I'll just do five at a time, set my camera up behind me, record, and then go watch those five and see where they hit and if they hit where I wanted them to hit. Now, I could tell you right now that the first one did not, but the second one did. And if I went back and looked at the footage, if I had my camera back here, I would probably be right. I've been doing this for the past week or so now, and I like to do things a while before I put them on video to where I know when the disc is coming out right, when my head is right, and when it's not. And it's just because of repetition. And I'll stand here, like I said, I have 11 or 12 discs here, and I'll go through the stack three or four times. It takes me like 15 minutes, but my body gets into, and I'll stop after every five and watch and make corrections and adjustments as I need to. That would be really nice to have a camera here and a camera there so I can watch where I hit on a target and also watch me keep my head still right from this side. I found there's two ways that I can keep my head quiet and I haven't settled on which way is best. The first way is to keep my vision pinpointed on something on the ground in front of me right? And keep my vision on that thing, right? As I go back, right? So I, I watch my target, take my head back and right here, I pick up something on the ground and just watch it and just keep my head there until I throw. The other thing that I thought about was watching the disc. And I think I've said this in a previous video and, and I started doing it and I got away from it, but it, it triggered my, my, my training in this triggered that thought again. What if I were to watch the disc, right? It keeps my head quiet. Like it doesn't keep it rock still, but it keeps it quiet. And then I, it follow through. So it looks something like this, right? I, that didn't do well. <laughs> I'm more partial to picking, picking up something on the ground. So coming back, picking up something on the ground and watching it. And then coming through, I think that keeps my, because it's because the object that I'm looking at is stationary, keeps my head stationary. Watching the disc might be tough. So, uh, I mean, up to you if you want to try this out, what, what you would rather do of those two things. But again, mine is I'm picking up something on the ground and staying there until my throat is gone. Right now, that's what I'm doing. And, I, and if you, there's a Scarborough Hills Chasing 900 video. I don't know if that'll come out. I think that'll come out after this one, but that was, that was really pre me getting heavy into this. And you, you can tell in that video, I'm all over the place with my accuracy and I need to get better with it. And I think this is the primary, this is the primary cause. The root cause of my inaccuracy is my head. So uh, I've been talking with Josh about it and I've been focusing on keeping my head quiet. And, and I think it's very important for all of us. Uh, in order for us to have consistency act in our accuracy and our power to keep our head in control during our shot. Well, there you have it. I hope this helped. Uh, I hope you learned something. Um, I hope you liked this type of content. Go ahead and comment below. Uh, again, subscribe, like, all that good stuff. It, it helps the channel out. And, and I really appreciate all of you um, for, for watching and putting time into to supporting me. And I will continue to do my best to put out content that you like and deserve. And uh, let's grow this channel together. And until next time, enjoy the journey. Here's your verse of the day.